I initially wanted to be involved in another progressive metal band where you explore fast riffs and incredibly complex uh, arrangements, but now I find myself being pulled towards something deeper, something more existential. There's a deeper reality that I'm trying to get into and I feel like that can only be accessed through ambient music. Because ambient music to me is less about the notes that you're playing and more about just the texture and the atmosphere you're building. It's just the grain of the string, the tension and release you feel when you play the guitar and just every nick and every sort of tone that you can get from the guitar is something that I've always been interested in. Like virtually every guitar player who was in my high school, uh, they were all people who just wanted to shred all the time and just had like uh, that energy of just like, if you can play fast, then you can play well, you know? And I was never drawn to that and it kind of felt isolating to some extent. So I'm not trying to play as fast as possible. I'm trying to say as much as I can in as few notes as possible. Um, and to play those notes in a different way. So harmonics was something that a friend uh, at Berkeley had shown me. It's just you know he showed me this really cool technique, and I was just amazed by the sound that he was producing. So um, I kind of just like I stole it and I uh, just went with it. And I find that with harmonics you can achieve so much with it, and it's so much that hasn't been done before. And and there's a lot to it. Like it's just so interesting. Like even mathematically, if you think about it, all a harmonic is is just taking the overtone series from a fundamental, for example. Say if you have the C note, um, or any note, let's say at 100 hertz, right? Then you can achieve a harmonic by playing the fifth above that at 150 hertz. And then that is a harmonic. Uh, and then if you go a fifth above that, then that's the harmonic of the harmonic. So essentially you can create a whole cascade of harmonics that just produce a multiplicity of possibilities. thing about harmonics is that it's not obvious where they are on the guitar. It's, it's, it's kind of like in between the frets almost, and they're hidden. Uh, harmonics can be achieved in, in, a, uh, in a multiplicity of ways. One is the standard harp harmonics where you achieve that through your right hand. You just take any chord and you can just fret 12 frets above that. And then you can also play with the auxiliary notes around that, that surround the harmonics to achieve that sort of harp-like ethereal sound. I'm also exploring a new way of achieving harmonics and this is something that, uh, that um, Alan Gogol uh, had pioneered. He calls it the belt harmonic technique. And what you do is, is you hover your ring finger over the natural harmonic, which would be the seventh fret or the fifth fret or the twelfth fret, and you pluck behind the hovered finger with your index finger and that achieves a harmonic. So it's as if, say for example, you're just plucking a harmonic. You can do the same thing, and the left hand index finger serves as the pick for that. 
just speaks to me on so many levels. So just the fact that it was born out of just the mind of, of somebody who has pushed the music industry forward in so many ways, in the sense that uh, everything about the guitar just speaks of innovation and of beauty and of forward thinkingness, which is something that I'm heavily drawn towards. And, um, and I'm chasing um, that, that that, that energy, that energy of, you know, of pushing the envelope forward, of trying to do things different. And every time I play the Lorata and hold it, that's the feeling I get. And just through that, the inspiration I find is, has been a lot more dramatic and a lot uh, more potent than what I've previously experienced. So to me, what attracts me most about the Lorata is the neck, is the multi-scale uh, neck because um, to me, it looks fourth dimensional almost. Uh, I've always been a fan of the multi-skill neck and, and, uh, and also just the fact that it is so comfortable from so many angles. You know, you have curves everywhere and, uh, and I love curves. <laughs> so just the fact that, you know, you can hold it like this, you can hold it like this, like this. It's just, it's just a beautiful piece of art that, you know, has every angle of it been taken account for. So I've always seen the Surrealist as more than the music and more so the ideas and the environment in which I'm trying to build. It's more of a space and it's more of a mood and it's more of an imprint versus um, just a set of songs. Well, what's next for the Surrealist is a dive into a new territory where we're moving away from um, our previous works of progressive metal and more into the ambient experimental territory. It's something that I've wanted to do for a long time, I've had a deep calling for it, but I've never really, I guess, had the courage to do so. Mm -hmm. 